Now, it's extremely rare to see a team get a penalty that is so large they can't overcome it. Most teams appeal, then pay their fine. But in 2001, that didn't happen. One team decided to drop out of NASCAR after getting a penalty. In this first edition of Racing Reference Stories, we are going to be talking about holes in the roll cage, death of a team. So let's get into it. Express Motorsports was a team owned by Midwest trucking executive Steve Coulter. They entered the truck series in late 1996. Randy Tolsmo would race for them in their debut start, but in 1997 he would go on to make 15 starts for the team. Not only that, he would score the team's first ever truck series win at Mesa Marin. He would then go on to score two top fives and five top tens. Tolsma and Express decided to go full time in 1998, and their stats are this. Zero wins, three top fives, 10 top tens, a pole, and an average finish of 14.5 and would finish 14th in the standings. Rather than building on that success in the truck series, Coulter moved his Express Motorsports team to the Bush series. They would make 26 starts amongst five different drivers from the likes of Morgan Shepard, the late Tony Roper, Robert Presley, Derek Cope, and Stanton Barrett. The most success they had was with Roper as he made 16 starts for them, scoring three top tens. Fast forward to 2000 and the team would make a leap. They would score the pole with Hunt Strickland in the season opening Daytona race, right before getting passed on lap one and eventually crashing out. They made 13 starts with three drivers from the likes of Hunt Strickland, Tim Sauter, and Daryl Lanigan. Strickland would find the most success scoring two top tens. By 2001, Express was in their first full-time season as a Busch Series team with their new driver, Tim Sauter. In their first 15 races, things were looking up. They produced two top 10 finishes, scoring a 10th at Daytona and a 9th place finish at Bristol. Unfortunately, everything would come crashing down on this upstart team. We have now arrived to the case and point of this story. June 16th, 2001 at Kentucky Speedway. The team was having its best run yet, as it was running most of the race inside the top 10. However, with less than 40 laps to go, Sauter crashed while battling for 12th position. In the middle of the backstretch, Hank Parker Jr. hit Sauter in the right rear and turned him into the outside wall. Sauter's car impacted the concrete hard with the right front, and the crash ended his race. They would wind up 30th. This is all bad enough on its own for a small team like this, but it would get even worse. Upon NASCAR doing a brief inspection of the car back in the garage, officials discovered something shocking. Holes had been drilled at the welded joints in the roll bar. In response, NASCAR issued a severe penalty by 2001 standards. In a rare move, NASCAR stripped the team of their 30th place finish and credited them with finishing last. In addition, Sauter was fined 60 driver points and Coulter was fined 60 owner's points. Crew Chief Dave Fuge was indefinitely suspended and fined $30,000. For a team that was small to begin with, this penalty hit hard. Instead of paying the fine, the team decided to shut down. Now I'm going to give you both sides to the story. NASCAR had said that these welded joints in the roll bar had the appearance that the team was trying to reduce weight by compressing the structural integrity. Meanwhile, Express Motorsports maintained that the roll cage modifications weren't in any attempt of cheating. They had claimed that the holes were for safety reasons. After the deaths of Adam Petty, Kenny Irwin, and their former driver Tony Roper along with Dale Earnhardt within a year, the safety of the cars was questioned. The biggest concern was that they were too rigid. The idea was that in an impact to the front, the car would not absorb any energy and the driver would feel a stronger impact. By having small holes, Express claimed that their cars would dissipate energy better and keep their drivers safer. I don't know who to believe here, so let me know what you guys think in the comments. Another thing to add here is that not only did they shut down because of the penalty, but the costs were simply too high to run in the Bush series. Dave Fuge was quoted in saying, It is very difficult for an independent team to run and be successful. It is hard to find a sponsor that can cover the high costs that come with running in the Bush Series. Just four days after the race, all equipment was for sale and the employees were released. Steve Coulter also claimed that NASCAR knew about the special roll bars as early as April, but didn't do anything until the crash at Kentucky. He would go on to say that NASCAR has made it real clear that if it wasn't their idea to begin with, then they weren't going to bless it. He also added that they are really struggling with the safety issue and that they have no idea what they're doing. 
Although their Bush Series team was shut down, their best days were still ahead of them. Later in 2001, Dave Fuge was able to convince Coulter to return to the Truck Series, and in 2002, they would win their first championship with Mike Bliss. The next year, they would win back-to-back -back championships with Travis Quaffle. Although they regressed, they would go on to sign Jack Sprague for the 2004 season and he would score a win at Mansfield and finish 7th in the standings. Steve Coulter had accomplished what he wanted. He was a champion. After 2004, he sold the team to Fuge where in 2005, Sprague would win another race and finish 8th in the standings. In 2006, Mike Bliss would return, scoring a win at Atlanta and finishing 11th in the standings. This was the final win under Fuge's ownership. After the 2007 season, Fuge would sell the team to Brian Scott and his father. Brian Scott would go on to win his first career truck series race at Dover in 2009. After that season, it was sold one last time. The remnants were sold to Kyle Busch as the foundation for Kyle Busch Motorsports. And once again, that'll do it for another video. Thank you guys so much for watching. This is Black Flags Matter. Catch you next time.